Managers of Reddit, what's the worst thing an employee has done to get themselves fired? Story one. Had a guy who was a recovering meth head, had all the physical tells, but seemed to have his cow sorted out in the interview, so I gave him a chance. He was getting clean so he could get joint custody of his kids. About six months, he was an ideal server. Great to customers. Never missed an order, anything. Well, court didn't think he did enough, so gave the baby mama the green light to move out of state and take the kids. Dude showed up to work dripping sweat, grinding his jaw, everything. I sent him home and said, you look like you're catching something bad. Don't come to work this sick again. I gave him the out. I gave him the single chance and the excuse. He came into work tweaking a second time, and I sent him home. I had a final paycheck waiting for him when he showed up for his next shift. He was clean that day, but I couldn't risk the health of the rest of my staff or my customers. Met him at the door, told him that there was pay for all of his shift, as well as for the rest of the week. He didn't argue it. He just nodded, said thanks for the chance, apologized for flipping it up, took the check and walked away. Never seen him since. Last I heard he was homeless and on meth. Broke my damned heart. It's always one of the worst terminations I've done because he asterisk knew asterisk he messed up up. But he also didn't have the wherewithal to be sober without doing it for his kids. That's the worst because I knew how great of a dude he was. And I also know how none of it mattered in the end. I fired other people for sweets, violence, harassment, theft. You think of it. And in my two decades in management, I've probably fired someone for it. I've let go of more people than I can count, but Jesse always sticks out to me as the worst, because that dude deserved so much better than he let himself have. Story two. I was a newly hired manager at McDonald's. The guy before me was working the cash register. This store was very highly trafficked. It was right off of the interstate, right on the border of city and middle of nowhere. It was the first place to stop and get some food for travelers coming in and the last place to stop and get some food for travelers leaving out. It was not uncommon to have over one zero 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 dollar in under an hour in the cash register, and policy was to drop money in the safe at least once every hour. So this new guy comes in, works for a few hours, but the manager never did the drops. After about four hours, the employee goes to the bathroom and disappears. Turns out he left with over four zero 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 dollar from the cash register. Police were called because obviously they have the guy's ID, address, and information on file. Only to find out that everything was false. He stole someone's ID and social that looked similar to him and used a fake address. I don't think the police ever found him or figured out who he was. Story 3. One employee was constantly stealing food from the refrigerator that other employees placed in there for lunch and late work night dinners. Eventually, after weeks of complaints, the IT department set up a hidden camera and caught the woman taking two yogurts, a Weight Watchers TV dinner, and a can of cola in one swoop. At another job, a co-worker got snippy with the receptionist during an internal phone call. As she clicked the phone, she said, F G B T H, but the click did not disconnect the call. The receptionist was still on the line and said, What did you call me? HR would later get involved. It was investigated, and the co-worker was terminated. Story 4. I used to run a large food distribution center. The overnight crew was responsible for picking orders for delivery the next day. There was a recovering alcoholic on the night crew who fell off the wagon one night. He snuck out at break and drank a whole fifth of vodka. Once he was back on the clock, he tried to stab another employee for picking the bag of potatoes he wanted for his pallet. A fight ensued and the drunk guy ran outside. We found him blacked out in his car with the doors locked. I was worried he might choke on his own vomit, so we called an ambulance. They didn't want to wake him or try to treat him where he had a knife, so we had to wait for the police to show up, break a window, and get him out of the car. Then they took him to the hospital to pump his stomach. Story 5. When I was a manager in a smaller kennel, Two of the female employees came independently to say one of the other workers had shown them some very inappropriate images and made a lot of inappropriate comments about the animals. Checked his socials just to see what kind of things he's posting publicly, and it's all the worst furry stuff and sexualizing animals. Also saw some pictures of him with the dogs at work that had some very inappropriate comments alongside them. He didn't work for much longer and lost his cow when I told him we can't allow him to work around animals or give him a reference. Story 6. One of my former chefs got drunk and probably high on shift. Smashed a door, tried to fight the GM. Left of his bicycle, but fell off it on the driveway, which no one knew. I come to work not knowing there was an issue the night before to the guy's stuff all over the driveway. Tobacco, papers, filters, a grinder, alcohol bottle smashed, his underwear, and I few other bits. I clean it all up on my way in. He's not there yet, 
so I start to prep breakfast, and I ask what the fudge has happened the night before when I find the door. He finally comes in late at 7.30, bleeding all over my kitchen from an open wound in his leg and he's wearing shorts. I fire him for gross misconduct. This isn't even really all the stupid part. The guy, so off his face on whatever substances he's been on, proceeds to forget that I fired him and comes into work the next day. I'm in flipping disbelief when he comes in and I have to fire him for the second morning in a row. Story 7. I read that as dumbest instead of worst and started typing this, so I'll finish it out anyway. I managed to call center for a while. One of my staff was a 23-year-old guy who just could not figure out how to get to work on time. He had his own car and only lived like 15, 20 minutes away, but he would be perpetually up to a half-hour late shift after shift. We had a generous tardiness absence policy. Three strikes for unexcused absences, but an unexcused tardy was only half a strike. And we were even nice enough to give him just a verbal warning at least two or three times instead of starting to count them because the call center wasn't one that had like an inbound call service level. It was just outbound calls, so the time you lost hurt you in other metrics and terminated your chance at getting bonuses. But soon enough, he had burned through five of the six unexcused tardiness he was allowed. The last time he was tardy, I brought him into my office and told him this was his final written warning. If he was even a minute late, clocking in without a legitimate excuse for the next 90 days, he would be terminated on the spot. That was on a Tuesday. On Wednesday, he was scheduled to arrive at 4 p.m. for an evening shift. He walks in at 4.25 p.m. holding a Starbucks cup in his hand. I couldn't help it. The drive through took forever. I took his badge and walked him out. I hope he learned from it. Story 8. This was probably 15 years ago or more. It was right when Symphony was getting big in the U.S. I hired a contractor for a PHP Symphony web application my company was working on for an internal client. Did a bunch of interviews, had them sit in a room and actually work on a project for a few hours just to demonstrate some competency in the framework and PHP. Reviewed the guy's code and it looked fine for the time we provided and he started working on the project. We were about six weeks into the project and he had delivered on one of the milestones, but had hit a wall. So I popped into his office to chat about where he was at and I downloaded his code from Subversion. Yes, Subversion, LOL. I give technical staff a lot of leeway on schedules and projects because I've never seen tight deadlines and directives do anything other than build a massive backlog of technical debt from people taking shortcuts. Anyway, I found out he was only making commits outside of working hours, or he would make one huge commit right after he arrived at work each day. So I asked to see what he was working on right then, and dude was just on some forum. I contacted the placement company to complain about it and see if they could dig into what was going on with the guy. I shared the commit times with the placement folks, and they were super suspicious as well. Now I'm really monitoring what the hell is going on with the guy and doing daily check-ins. Fast forward to the guy not showing up for work. I'm getting last-minute appointments he has to go to or other excuses for him to leave early or show up super late. Some days in the office he's super productive and other days nothing is happening. So I call the placement company again after talking to the guy. They set a meeting and we basically read this guy the riot act about expectations. That night, I get a phone call at home from the guy who looked up my contact information and called my house. He starts ranting at me about how unfair I'm being and what an unpleasant person I am for going behind his back. Dude is asterisk screaming asterisk at the top of his lungs into the phone. So I noted the time he called and called the placement company first thing to say we're done with the guy and to bring in more candidates. I tell my account manager what happened and he right away asked me what time the call happened. So I tell him and he says he was on the phone with the guy at the same time. He reports it up the chain at their offices and the next thing I know, I'm being asked to a deposition because the placement company ended up suing the guy who was actually twins. I learned from the account manager after the fact that they had applied for jobs under different names with the same credentials with the placement company. One of them had the legit credentials, but they thought they could work it out by sending one guy to a job just enough to make it appear as though progress was happening while the other one learned how to code PHP on the job. They would try and balance both jobs. I never learned what the hell happened after I turned over tons of emails, project reports, logs from Subversion, and call logs with the placement company. It was absolutely one of the craziest, oh no things I've ever had happen. Story 9. Married plant manager had an affair with an assembly worker who was his granddaughter's age and a mom to two very young boys. 
The girl dated one of the techs who was 12 years older than her and worked at the same plant. The tech found out about the affair and terminated her. The company fired the plant manager. Many forklift operators got fired for accidents while under influence. Employee hit a car in an employee parking lot and fled the scene and never showed up to work. So I guess they fired themselves, though it would make more sense for them to keep working to pay for the damages. Guy took bereavement leave for his grandpa funeral in UK, but instead went partying in Jamaica and someone snitched on him providing SM posts as proof. Analysts screenshotted MSG from their boss and instead of forwarding it to his BF, sent it to his boss. His boss was named on his phone as C00CK sucking CUNT. Some guy got caught reselling items bought at a sample sale. Prof got forced into early retirement for drinking on the job and being drunk all the time. It took them forever to get rid of him because he was tenured. Prof got fired for sleeping with his students, three guys, A, B, and C. A would come in the morning, clock out C, and clock himself in, and then leave ten minutes later. Guy B came in in the afternoon, clocked out guy A, clocked himself in, and would leave ten minutes later. Guy C would come in at night to clock himself in, clock B out, and leave ten minutes later. They did that seven days a week, engineer claimed ton of overtime, but never came to work. She was discovered by an entry-level tech recently promoted from the floor who was sent to her for training on Monday. By Wednesday, he reported he couldn't find her Monday, Tuesday, or Wednesday PPL, who should have been fired but never were. Supervisor who slept with the assembly worker. The worker sued the company, claimed the supervisor used his position of power to get her to sleep with him, and one dollar dollar dollar. After that, he slept with another assembly worker. The company got sued again for the same thing and had to pay dollar dollar dollar. The guy is still there. A guy who kept coming to work hangovered and one Monday threw up in a cooling liquid of a CNC machine that was shared between four job stations. The other three guys weren't happy. A guy who was working as an engineer without engineering degree who balanced automotive assembly line in a way where it was impossible to build anything because he did such a poor job which caused months of delays. A guy who never did anything. He came to work, drank huge bottles of pop every day and never completed his assigned work. Story 10. Woman owned the hibachi place next to the grocery store I worked in. She set her purse with the night's deposit down in the bagging area of the checkout and left. My employee, in full view of five cameras in that area that are very noticeable, saw the purse, looked inside, gave a big smile, picked it up and left on the bus. Hibachi owner comes in ten minutes later, freaking out. We run back the cameras, see what happened. Give the info to the cops. Cops go to her house. She throws the door open for them to see the purse sitting on the TV stand and her husband packaging cola at the kitchen table. Story 11. When I was a paralegal manager, I had to fire a guy for masturbating at his desk. We had high cubicles, and he was in the back of the office. Well, we could hear the sounds. He was trying to do it under his coat, but it wasn't working. I had to fire him, and we had to get the two biggest guys from the office to carry him out as he screamed death threats at us. For three months, he waited outside our building every day and just stared at people as they left the building. Cops said they couldn't do anything about it unless he entered the building. Well, one of the employees complained to her boyfriend, and the boyfriend beat him up, and he never came back. Story 12. Not a manager, but I worked at a university in the department that handles all the aspects of internal construction, maintenance, and moving. One of our fellow drivers got caught masturbating in a company truck, worked at a restaurant where my co-worker was addicted to Klonopin and was found passed out in the bathroom. I worked at a supermarket chain and a new store was being opened up. They pulled employees from multiple stores to go assist in its grand opening and training of new employees. One of the managers and an employee, who was a friend prior to me working there, got caught logging hours for each other in the system when they weren't there, something to the tune of a full month's pay. Story 13. I will preface this by saying I'm not a manager and that this individual wasn't fired, but this is probably the craziest work story I have, so I'm rolling with it. I work for a very large Fortune 500 company in tech. Two employees, a manager, and our director at the time were all expecting kids around the same time, so our office threw a baby shower for them. Probably 50, 60 people attended, including our senior director. We were in this large conference room. The whole thing was impressively catered. They each got diaper cakes, and it was a pretty impressive event for a work baby shower. One of the adjacent teams we work with closely from another office also made a congratulatory video. A lot of effort put into this. Senior director then leaves the room and one of the managers that reports to the director having a baby announces he has something for us all to watch. He airplays his phone to the big screen. 
The first thing to pop up is a video that has a woman with her ball out wearing assless leather pants, bent over a backless wooden bar stool, being messed up from behind by a dude in leather. Room goes dead quiet for a solid five, ten seconds trying to confirm with their brain what their eyes were seeing. Meanwhile, this guy scrambles to get this hardcore off the projector. The room finally erupts in laughter, and that pretty much ended the event. Not only was he not fired, but years later was promoted. Super talented guy, but I still can't believe he wasn't fired, didn't resign. Story 14. I don't know if worse means dumb or bad, but either way, this is a question for me. They get worse as you go down. For context, because of where I work, all of these acts and crimes were committed by teenagers, usually 16 or under. Stole pizza, and when asked what she was doing, replied, I'm stealing. Was on track for a minor leadership role when it was discovered that he had been stealing ice cream products all summer. The description of the thief was very specific, and this guy wore the same bright pink hoodie with a giant rose on it every day. Naturally, the hoodie was included in the description. The guy insisted that the girl who reported the thief had him confused with an identical employee who wore the same hoodie, sold other employees already used employee tickets to guests, and lied about it to the general manager. Stole the iPhone of a born and bred New Orleans guy three times his size off the desk of the HR manager. He then refused to give the phone back when the guy he stole from and his big brother knocked on his door, tracking him down with Find My iPhone. My almost assistant manager hooked up with a teenaged employee. The assistant manager was pretty young himself, probably 18. The girl was really into him and had been going for him. But when it didn't work out, she got upset, her parents noticed, and called us. We had to fire both employees threw a makeshift shrapnel bomb at another employee who put her arm up to block it. The bomb, a sealed metal water bottle with dry ice that had been inside for hours, exploded on contact with her arm, ripping it open and hitting another employee in the head. The bomb was accidentally created by another employee, dry ice and metal water bottle. Stole a car under the truly mistaken impression that he was borrowing it and allowed to do so. He took another employee and said car to go get food with himself driving, despite the fact that he had no license or permit. He thought a school ID would suffice. He then went about 60 down a 30, swerved from one ditch to the other, and totaled the car in the ditch outside the place of employment. Story 15. Our company regularly visits people's homes as often as once a month. Many years ago, a dude has a key to enter a specific house to get their job done each month. Apparently, they keep alluring VHS tapes in the house, and he sits down to watch one in the living room. Unfortunately, he is surprised to find out that the 13-year-old daughter is homesick for the day when she came out and saw him doing his thing. I guess he technically wasn't fired since he just came to the office and dropped off his uniforms and keys and walked home without talking to anyone. Almost everyone in the small town the customer lived in canceled within a few months. Story 16. When I ran a retail store, I once had an employee steal money from the safe. I got a call from one of my assistant managers close to close that the safe was short money. I drove to the store and verified the safe was short and figured out what happened within 10 minutes. The employee took a broom and moved where the security camera was pointing. To make sure it was no longer pointing at the safe, they stepped in front of the safe. Unfortunately for them, I could still see their legs on the camera, and they were wearing shorts. This happened in the winter in Michigan. Only one employee wore shorts to work at that time. Story 17. Not a manager, but have been in the restaurant biz for 30 years. Worst I saw was a 40-plus chef hitting on and basically attempting to molest our 16-year-old hostess. I caught him myself. He had her cornered in the dish room with nobody around. Even though he was a full chef and me just a Sioux, and 10 years my senior, I basically kind of fired him. Told him if he didn't leave now of his own free will and never come back, he would be leaving on a stretcher, possibly in a bag. Poor girl was in tears. It's been somewhere around 15 years, and it still infuriates me to think about. She pressed charges. It was all on camera, and he was arrested. Got off light, though, on a plea, which also infuriates me. Got a couple months in jail, not even prison. Years of probation, and didn't even have to register on the close relationship offenders list, which also infuriates me until this day. He was never a chef anywhere around here ever again, though. We blackballed the fudge out of him. Arr! Sorry, had to get that out. Edit, I'm not a hero, guys. I'm just what every adult should be. Zero tolerance to bullies and people that ignore consent. Story 18. Had one of my very well-liked and hard workers leaving the state. He'd done everything needed to do with HR, two-week notice, started returning issued items. 
On his last day, a store manager trainee got a bug up his peach because this guy didn't have an issued item with him. Dude explained the above. Today is my last day, etc. Manager trainee didn't want to hear it at all. My guy gets the fudge this cow. I'm out. Look, jumped on a forklift and drove it across the parking lot to the Taco Bell drive through and bought a last meal. Parked in the middle of the parking lot and ate his burritos. Manager trainee lost his mind. My dude just smirked and tossed his company-owned stuff at his feet as he drove by. Parked the forklift and clocked out. Still makes me smile to this day. Story 19. Lots to choose from, but this was one of the first that I became aware of. Way back when the internet was being introduced as a business tool and prior to any formal policies being established, there was a guy in a private office who discovered that the internet was full of censored photos. Not only did he like viewing it, but he had a habit of printing it to his adjacent desktop printer. All is good until his printer broke and tech services took it away for repair and redirected his print jobs to the central printer located next to reception. So the next day, while browsing censored photos, he finds something he likes and hits the print button. But instead of the familiar whirring of the printer staring up, he realizes his mistake. He then attempts to casually walk up to reception to retrieve the print out, only to discover nothing in the tray. Instead, one of the secretaries is holding the print out, asking him if he is looking for something. He was fired the next day. Thing was, as there was no policy in place at the time of his indiscretion, if he fought the dismissal, chances are he would have won. Story 20. I used to be in the news industry on the commercial production side. A few years back, we ran a tragic story of a father and son drowning on a fishing trip. The father was a well-known doctor at a local hospital. The very next day, we had a salesperson literally approach the hospital he worked at and say, well, it looks like a good time to run a new recruitment ad. Our GM got a call from someone at the corporate level of the hospital, and we never saw that salesperson again. The GM didn't even bother to send an email or make an announcement about her no longer being employed. Managers were the only ones that were told why. Story 21. It was grease trap day at the salad joint. If you don't know, the dishwashing sink was set up to collect grease and oils so they don't go into the water system. Eventually, this trap needs to have its collection dumped. It absolutely is one of the most disguising and vile-smelling things you will ever experience. I had a new guy that had been there for around two weeks, and we needed to clean the grease trap and transport the viscous liquid to the grease disposal spot. We got it all in a few five-gallon buckets filled to the brim. He grabbed two at once, and on his way out of the kitchen and into the dining lobby, he dropped them. Both of them. That liquid went absolutely everywhere, running back into the kitchen, under tables, seeping into the baseboards and walls. I was absolutely astounded by the mess. This wasn't just something you could mop up. It was gallons of the most foul, slippery substance imaginable. The smell was something like dead raccoons and leech farts. Totally atrocious. I said, dude, we have to figure out how to clean this up. And he said, okay, I'll be right back. He didn't come back. I waited around 15 minutes, called him, and left a voicemail. You're fired. I spent a few hours using various cooking sheets to scrape it up and dispose of it. I then mopped the remainder off the floor with whatever chemicals I could find, pretty sure I took the finish off the floor. My shoes and pants were completely stinky and ruined, and I had to take the bus home, which took longer than an hour. The owner gave me $100 the next day. We decided to hire professionals from that point on, but funnily enough, the guy that came and collected it accidentally spilled the thing in his flipping car. That place was cursed. Story 22. Had a guy show up drunk to work. We all knew it, but he was a young kid, and we decided to give him a pass. The dude drives a delivery truck. Told him to go home, sleep it off, and come back the next day. No punishment, just a day off. He insisted he wasn't drunk and was good. Again, try to explain no trouble, just go home and come back tomorrow. He wouldn't go. Gave him the choice, either go home or take a breathalyzer. If he didn't blow straight zero S, he would be fired. Opted for the breathalyzer because he knew he wasn't drunk. Got a cop to come down and give him a breathalyzer. Blew a point zero five. Was fired okay the spot and got that day off anyway. Story 23. Worked at a hotel. One of the overnight front desk agents had to evict some guests for partying. After he had them removed, he realized that he had never finalized their check-in, and he didn't have any information for the people on the room. Very apologetic. Accidents happen and good overnight help is hard to find. I wanted to get at least a picture of the people he evicted. I did some research on the key used to access the room so I could check the camera on the time they checked in. Turns out the overnight front desk guy made the key for himself. He threw the party and there was no guest kicked out. Story 24. I currently manage software engineers. If you've ever worked with engineers, they can be a different breed. 
I haven't necessarily had a bad experience with one, but have definitely met some characters. I hired a guy. He terminated the interview. It was virtual. Resume was great, had excellent references. My team alternates between three halves and two thirds in office days. And this guy had worked remote since 2011, and in his first day, it flipping showed. Before I even got into my office, I had four complaints about this guy's body odor. I wasn't really sure what to think until I got there and shook his hand. I, oh no, near fainted. I've never smelled body odor like that in my entire life. I immediately asked him to come outside with me because I didn't want him stinking up the office. I asked him what was going on. If he had a medical condition I needed to be aware of, he had no idea what I was talking about. So I told him point blank he smelled like a bomb hit a diaper. He was shocked and couldn't believe it. I asked him to take care of it and gave him the rest of the week to work from home to get it taken care of. A week goes by and he comes into the office. Immediate complaints from people. One colleague threatened to walk out. I asked the guy again what the deal was and he told me, Well, I sprayed Febreze on myself before I walked in, my jaw almost dropped. Apparently, this guy hasn't showered in literal years and just washes himself with water from his sink once a week. He also smokes cigarettes and apparently only eats one meal a day and drinks IPAs for dinner. I asked him again to take care of this or there would be conversations with HR. Conversations with HR happened, as you probably guessed. He was eventually terminated, but one thing he told HR was that he wasn't sure how to properly shower and asked for guidance. Story 25 Asked them about their skill set and experience when they were transferred to me, as I was told they were underperforming. Asked specifically about things they said they could do on their resume and from their interview, not mentioning why I was asking. They plainly stated they had no experience in any of those things. Ended up letting them go within the week. My guess is they had someone write their resume for them and studied common interview questions, but no idea how they even got through the interview stage. Pretty sure the person who interviewed them got let go eventually too, though. Story 26. I used to work for a large retailer that had all its employees take an annual anonymous job satisfaction survey on the computer. Although the survey was supposed to be tamper-proof, the store manager somehow was able to change the results before sending them to corporate headquarters. He would have been able to get away with it, except for the fact that he changed the results asterisk to asterisk much. As altered, the survey showed that every employee in the store was 100% satisfied with their job. Headquarters management immediately saw this was completely impossible, launched an investigation, and the store manager was soon an ex-manager. Story 27. Hired a Romanian guy. After four weeks of him shadowing someone, he starts working on his own and his work. After a week, I take him into the office with another manager to have a chat and see if he understands what he's meant to be doing, if he needs more training, if he feels he need a couple more weeks of shadowing, etc. And throughout, he says no. I ask him if he's certain. He says yes. So I bring up the previous week's work and tell him he's not in trouble, not to worry as he's new, but it wasn't up to standard. So if he thinks he needs more training, just say so, and we can sort it out. He says no. Another week passes. Work isn't good enough, so I take him in again and go through the same process of asking if he needs any help understanding what he needed to do. Again, he insists not. So I said to him, if I don't see an improvement, I'll have to go down to the performance management process, as his work isn't up to standard despite him insisting that he knows what he's doing, and he start kicking off, shouting and swearing, called me and the other manager are unpleasant. We both looked at each other like WWTF. We've given you plenty of opportunities to say you need more training. And he wouldn't calm down, so I said to him to go home, stay home, and he'll receive a letter in the next couple of days to invite him to a disciplinary meeting because it's unacceptable, and he swung a punch at me. We took that as his resignation, and he never came back. Story 28. My stupid sister lied her way up to get an engineering manager job at a boat manufacturer company. She has absolutely no education higher than a GED per HS diploma. However, Boat Company decides to give her a company credit card upon hiring and a bunch of projects for her and her team to work on. She has no idea how to do the projects because she is not an engineer. Has no idea how to manage a team as she never managed people before. She doesn't show up to any project meetings, so the team she was hired to lead never knew what to do. Time goes on and the employees that are left hung up with no leadership on what to do start complaining. The boat company finally tracks her down and turns out she was traveling around the U.S. site seeing and spending money at high-end restaurants. She was fired, rightfully so. Not sure if she had to pay anything back or was charged with anything. Sure hope she was, though. Story 29. 
had a barista at a college campus coffee shop we were having issues with. I was trying to reach him via phone. No answer, so the director went over to check on him. He gets over there. There's a few students standing around with a mix of horror and amusement on their faces. Guy is missing, but his phone is sitting on the counter blaring hardcore boy-censored photos at max volume. Turns out while no one was in the shop, he decided to view some adult material, shut himself in the storage room to rub one out, and in his haste left his phone on the counter. Director calls me up and says, you're never going to believe this. He was union, and they tried to fight to get his job back by claiming close relationship addiction and asking the company to pay for him to go to rehab. They declined. Story 30. I once had an employee complain about how they thought they were shorted a raise from a few months earlier, so I had the company look into it. They found out that it was a bit of a gray area for a few employees. They were hired right before the raise was issued. But the company decided to go ahead and give them all the raise immediately as well as back pay them from the date the raise would have been issued. When I informed the employee of this via text message, they didn't show up for their scheduled shift and were going on vacation for two weeks after that day, they proceeded to blow up my phone with message after message of some pretty threatening stuff. Threatening lawsuits for wage thefts, lying to them among other things. Person basically went absolutely nuts for the entire two weeks of their vacation. I never responded to a single message, just let them rant. I always have the schedules posted three weeks out, so when they e-called while I was out of the office, an employee told them when they worked next. Helpful employee had customers to deal with, so told them to wait a second, and angry employee got rude, so they hung up the phone on them. Angry employee called back, and helpful employee told them when they worked next quickly. But hateful said they needed to write it down, so tell them again when they get a pencil and paper. Helpful employee showed great patience and did as they asked. Disgruntled employee then continued to text hateful things to me for the next week leading up to their return. Come said return date, and my boss and I were there waiting, just in case something got nasty. When they showed up, they just ranted about how they were stolen from and how they were going to sue us. It eventually led to them flipping me off in the office when I called them out about their wrongful accusations. They were suspended at that point and told not to return until notified. Two days later, they were back in the store demanding a bunch of disposable vapes they said they had there. They must have been thrown away months ago because I could never find them. They thought I was lying, so they called the cops on me. Cops came and I explained the situation to them. They told the employee to leave, so they eventually left. This turned into them refusing to come back for a disciplinary write-up. They said they didn't want to get arrested, since we already called the cops on them once before. I reminded them that it was them that called the cops, but they said I was lying again. They instead tried to do the discussion on the phone, but they refused to listen to the write-up. At that point, we considered them a voluntary quit and washed our hands of them. Last I heard, they were threatening to sue the police as well. Kind of weird how they kept saying they had a lawyer telling them to do all this. And yet we never spoke to or saw said lawyer. Also, this was all at a convenience store, not some big-time high-laying job. Story 31. Was a manager at a well-known restaurant as a university student. We hired and trained a 20-year-old girl with some prior experience serving. She often made mistakes like putting in the wrong items or forgetting to put her orders in. The last straw was when she accidentally gave a table an appetizer they didn't order. The table already ate half of the appetizer when she realized her mistake. What did she do? She grabbed the half-eaten appetizer from the table and gave it to the table that ordered it. They were next to each other. She said she was embarrassed to make another mistake. That's why she did that. Story 32. Security guard at a 24-hour convenience store. Six Sixthly harassed multiple female employees, myself included, over text. Video caught him going into the management-only office and using the staff phone number sheet to get their numbers. He also added the women on Snapchat after they popped up in his recently added contacts quick ad. Pretty easy to detect him as the account owner by both phone number and his full name as his Snap user. Reported him for following me around the store and sending inappropriate messages to me while working. With timestamps, his wife owned the security company he worked for. Messed up himself over big time. He thought I wouldn't report him because the other women he victimized had been too scared to do so. Story 33. Guy I worked with and helped to train for a management position was promoted to manage his own store. His very first quarterly audit saw the store $20,000 short. As an aside, plus $200 is enough to trigger the deep audit. So it was all hands on deck. He was put on admin leave pending a full store audit. I was yanked out of my store along with two other managers. Assistants got to play bosses for a week. 
the area manager, and even the regional manager showed up, and we went through every last receipt, invoice, deposit, camera log, everything. Every scrap of paper that had anything event tangentially related on it was looked at. Cigarettes? He was short 20 grand in cigarettes. At the time, that was around 250, 300 cartons worth of cigarettes. And he was being clever about it. At no point was he on camera carrying cartons out of the store. When deliveries happened, the totes carrying the cartons were always just off camera, but he made sure several other totes were always center frame, so it looked like they just happened to end up there. Best we could tell was he was putting them into half-full coffee cup boxes off camera. He then entered the boxes as transfers to other stores. Then he must have taken the cartons out of the boxes before dropping them off. We assumed this because he always ordered quite a few extra coffee cups each order, far more than he sold, and had been calling around to every store within 100 miles to pawn them off. He also figured out he could manipulate the invoices so the missing cartons wouldn't show up on the end-of-month report. Then he'd order extra cartons to show up on the next month's report, basically a mini Ponzi scheme. So we never actually had enough proof that it was he who had stole the cartons. We had a lot of, it was probably him evidence. However, he was not the only person who did ordering, entered invoices, check orders, and put away freight. The chain of custody was broken in asterisk many asterisk places. The assistant manager, also on admin leave, proclaimed to not know anything. The problem is the quarterly audits are on random days, so he had no way to know when to order enough cartons to make up for what was missing for the audit. I don't know if the company ever pressed charges. They never told us where it went after that, and I never saw anything in the papers. He was fired, though. Even if they couldn't prove he stole anything, he still came up 20K short on an audit. More than grounds to sack him. As I recall, the assistant manager was brought back on, but forbidden from doing any ordering or invoicing or paperwork, or just about anything an assistant is responsible for. Pretty sure she left after about a month. The store had to go through monthly audits for something like a year after that. And surprise, surprise, the very next audit came up plus $1.50. And each audit after that was well within bounds. Story 34. I had an employee use a company gas card on his personal car. Purposes for company vehicles only. Got caught using his gas card on a Sunday night at 12 a.m. In the hood. Not where he would be working, but right near his house and not the time he would be working. He admitted to it. I asked him if it happened previously. He said no. Got a warning letter. Two days later, I got the report he did it two previous times. Lost his job the next day. If he had just told me the truth, he wouldn't have lost his job. And I asked him three times. What makes you think if you got caught the most recent time, you wouldn't get caught the previous times? Story 35. 018 Not Manager but former regional manager here, showed up to do an unannounced cash audit on one of my retail stores, only to find all the petty cash in the safe missing. Turns out SM just so happened to choose that day to borrow the money to buy nose candy for the first time, he swore, and I showed up at the wrong time before he could pay it back to the safe. The problem was, I showed up because I had remote DVR access, and I had footage of him doing it previously, and then taking the ASM into the women's restroom for an hour, while the store was locked up asterisk in the middle of the day. Turns out people call asterisk customer service asterisk when your national brand cellular telephone retail location is supposed to be open on a Tuesday afternoon and it's not. Edit. I totally forgot the best part. Of course the dude was married with kids at home and IIRC he had one on the way. Story 36. I was training new hires on how to deal with hazardous materials in a warehouse and this guy kept falling asleep during the videos. I reminded them they needed to pass the test in order to keep their job, allowed them to go get coffee halfway through. It was 2 a.m., I get being tired, but they signed up for that shift, and kept asking some of the test questions throughout the videos to make sure they were paying attention. He took the test three times and failed all three times, then accused me of being racist and got really unprofessional with me. Ended up taking his badge, and another supervisor walked him out. Story 37 an employee of mine unknowingly committed insurance fraud. She had a minor workplace injury, so I had her fill out all of the necessary incident forms and informed her that she had the option to see one of our medical providers for workplace injuries. She said that she was going to leave for the day to go see them. I turned in the forms to HR so they could do what they needed to do. The next day, HR comes to me and asks me to clarify which provider the employee went to because they said they couldn't find any record of her visit. 
I went to the employee to ask her, and she just told me that we could forget about it, and it wasn't really that serious. I told the HR director what the employee told me, and she immediately calls the employee up and confronts her. HR director lays into her and tells her she already filed a claim with our workman's comp insurance, and it would be very bad if she lied about going to the provider. Employee comes clean and said she just wanted to go home for the day. She was fired on the spot by HR, not by me. Story 38. Hired a dude that was down on his luck. Just got out of jail, just had a kid. For a while, he's doing good and he's getting along with everyone. One employee throws a Halloween party and dude gets absolutely wasted and makes an peach of himself. Employee throwing party asks him to leave and dude punches his co-worker and ends up in jail. Dude gets released and we negotiate a return to the job with the consent of the person who got punched. Everyone felt bad for the dude despite everything. Dude spiraled a bit but didn't really do anything to get fired. Then he shows up drunk and I have to fire him. Like two days later, he takes the cops on a high-speed chase with his kid in the truck. He's in prison now. Story 39. I used to be a manager for a large logistics company. We had a worker who became obsessed with a customer, looked up her address in the computer system, and drove an hour and a half to her house in the middle of the night to ask her out. Customer got freaked out, called the cops, and the guy got arrested. We also had a guy get hired. Our hiring process was several weeks long. He works his first day, a full eight-hour shift, and does pretty good. As he's leaving, I tell him I'll see him tomorrow, and he turns and says, Oh no, I'm going on vacation for six months tomorrow. I'll see you when I get back. I immediately text our HR rep to see if they were aware of this guy's vacation. They weren't, and the HR rep texts our district manager to see if he knew anything. He didn't. The guy came back six months later and walks in the door like nothing happened, and we had to escort him from the property telling him he abandoned his job. And not as a manager, but involving a manager, although at a different job. We had a manager having an affair with one of his employees. The manager is questioned work Saturdays and would come in for start of shift, then disappear to drive over to the girlfriend's house. We worked at a home security company and got free cameras, and the girl's boyfriend started watching the camera and seeing this random guy showing up at their house. He managed to put a tracker on his girlfriend's car and followed it one day to our work, where the manager and his mistress were flipping in the car in the parking lot. The boyfriend took a baseball bat to the manager's car, and the manager called the cops. The whole building was standing in the parking lot watching some guy beat the cow out of the manager's car while the girlfriend and the manager, both of whom were half, tried to grab the baseball bat. Worst part was that the manager was married with kids and had to drive home with a busted windshield and no job that night. I wonder how he explained that one to his wife. Story 40. Had a newer employee come in one morning acting a little off. Asked if he was all right, and he explained he hadn't got a lot of sleep. I leave the shop for the day to do some service calls and get a call about two hours in from frantic co-workers asking me if I know what's wrong with him. I asked what's happening, and they say he's pale, breath, but passed out and unresponsive in the break room. They had already called emergency services before calling me. The owner of the company found him and thought he was dead initially, and she lost her cow. Odd trying to balance opiates and Adderall. He's fine now. Just doesn't work with us anymore. I still see him from time to time. After being receiving Narcan and going to the ER, calling his parents and finding out some history on him, he thought he was getting fired for taking a nap on his break. Story 41. Asterisk, I work at a library. We have copy machines and printers that the public uses for a small fee, like five cents a page. A lady claimed the job of counting the money from the coin machines, which was fine. No one else really wanted to. After about six months, the accounts office called me her immediate manager, and a few others in to set up an observation investigation. Turns out she'd been stealing all the dimes from the machines. For months. The accounts office obviously caught on when our location never sent any dimes in with our deposits. I have no idea how much money she walked away with. But it couldn't have been worth her job and the police investigation. Though it later came to light that she also had been stealing from the PTA concession stands at her kids' football games. So, maybe she was just a thief. Tatarisk. We also had two employees whose kids went to school together and didn't like each other. I'm not sure why. They were high schoolers. It could have been anything. But the employees got into a fist fight at the school during pickup. Restraining orders were filed. They both got fired. One had a daughter who came in and tried to fight the location manager. The other had a son who came in and asked for help getting emancipated. Story 42. My company's senior leadership is uncommonly young. 
I'm the oldest director at 40. Our CEO is in his early 30s and looks younger than that. One day after an executive meeting, we ended up sitting outside the conference room just shooting the cow. This is also an area where sales reps can congregate, work, or just hang out. While we're not an enormous company, we are fairly large, and our primary business model is providing a service to sales organizations who also have access to our office spaces. So it's not unusual to not know who someone is. Anyway, while the most of executive team was sitting at a table, a sales rep one table over decided to tell a joke to his buddies loudly and dropped the hard R multiple times. And when the CEO told him that this wasn't appropriate workplace language, the dude became confrontational and said something along the lines of, What? You gonna be a bad person and run to HR? The boss motioned toward our HR director and said, Well, no, but this is Lisa, and she's in charge of HR. I'm not even sure if he still had any idea that he was talking to the CEO.